Hey everyone, second endgame meta update video here for the Into the Light patch. Today we're going to be going over the tier list changes for this patch. Now, I haven't really adjusted many weapons here. I've adjusted a couple of them based on my feelings over the last season or so, but I've decided to add in all of the new Brave versions of all the weapons that have been reprised from Destiny 2, and I'm excited to show you guys where I think they place. So first off, we're going to start off with an adjustment. In the shotgun tab, I believe I've moved Heritage from S tier down to A tier. And the reason for that is I looked at all of the weapons in A tier, and I realized that I use Heritage, or I think it has the same viability as a lot of the weapons in A tier. For example, Imperial Decree, or some of the less favored rapid fire one 2 punch shotguns. And I've realized that weapons like Ikelos SG, weapons like Until It's Return, are just higher utility or more likely to be used in endgame content. I think Heritage, while it is still very strong, nothing has changed about Heritage itself. You know, I don't really see it as being as viable or as frequently used in today's sandbox, given the prevalence of melee builds or the update to Trench Barrel. I think Heritage is just fine right now, but I don't think it's an S tier weapon. Moving on, we have Tusk of the Boar in the Breach GL section. You'll also note the addition of Forbearance and Mountaintop. We'll talk about that in just a second, but I'm going over the tier list shifts first. So Tusk of the Boar, initially I put it in the S tier. Now that things have changed and time has passed and we realized Chain Reaction is a bit weaker on this thing than Forbearance for whatever reason, as people have posted testing on Twitter, Deconstruct also has that internal cooldown. I've decided to place it at the top of A tier. And the reason why this makes sense to me is because I think it is still better than New Pacific Epitaph, but I think they both share the same purpose. They're both decent waveframes, New Pacific Epitaph having demo and having good damage perks, while Tusk of the Boar has much better utility, which is what a waveframe is more likely to be used for. But I do think Tusk of the Boar is a little bit better than New Pacific Epitaph for obvious reasons, but I don't think it's as good as some of these GLs that are in the S tier. The only reason that it's even worth considering is because it is a kinetic slot waveframe. It is the best one in the kinetic slot. Next up, we have the Slammer in the Swords tab, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. Slammer, I've decided to put at the top of S tier. I think initially I had it in the A tier because we weren't sure at the time whether it was going to be enhanceable or not. Now we know for a fact that it's going to be enhanceable, and people are already using this thing in speedruns even though it's not enhanced eager because of that increased Vortex speed for that heavy attack line. So the Slammer, I'm going to go ahead and put it at the top of S tier. Uh, swords are really not used for damage for the most part, and so I value movement, I value utility, eager edge, chain, cold, steel, demolitionist, all these excellent perks on the slammer make it the top of the top. Um, and we're going to talk about how it compares to something like Falling Guillotine's Brave version in just a second. So moving back, let's go ahead back to the sniper tab here and I'll talk about everything from this recent Into the Light update, all the Brave Arsenal weapons and where I think they rank amongst the other weapons in this tier list that were already here. So first up we have Succession's Brave version. I think Succession's Brave version does not outdo Supremacy. Supremacy has a better archetype. It's craftable at the moment and it has a whole host of perks that are extremely useful to have on a sniper. I think snipers are not that useful for damage as a very narrow kind of lens to view them through. And so Supremacy is able to do damage, it's able to do utility, it has so many things going for it. Whereas Succession, the only thing that was added to it from this past update as the Brave version has come out is Discord and Redirection. And that's kind of an interesting perk combo to have, a lot of people have commented on it. However, I will say that, you know, it is an aggressive frame sniper, and so while you are going to be able to get kills with it fairly easily, it does take a really long time to shoot every single shot. You know, it's a 72 RPM, so it's not going to feel too good, and I think it's a pretty niche use, that Discord redirection role. That being said, it still has all the old perks that Succession used to have, so it's a straight upgrade no matter what. And I think Indomitability is up there with Brain Inheritance if you're using this sniper in some sort of ability build. Next up, we have the Mountaintop. So the Mountaintop's Brave version, I've decided to tentatively put it at the bottom of S tier. Obviously, nobody has their hands on this weapon right now, but this thing is excellent. It has utility in the form of movement, so jump boosting. Uh, it has excellent damage potential with Frenzy, Recombination. Even some of the out-of-the-way perks like Harmony are potentially going to be decent in maybe GM settings or ad clear settings. Now, the only reason why I haven't placed this thing higher is I'm treating it kind of strictly like a damage option right now. If it's ever revealed that this weapon ends up being very good at ad clear, which we don't know yet, if it does end up being very good at ad clear, has a very high blast radius, then, you know, perks like Ambitious Assassin, 
uh, or more ad clear slaying perks like one for all might even be viable on this weapon. But for now, I've decided to put it below Wilder Flight because Wilder Flight has higher damage potential right now because of a slot difference and also below Forbearance because Forbearance is just more universally applicable as the best ad clear wave jail in the game. We've also put Forbearance at the top of S tier. Now this might be a little bit controversial. A lot of people do like old Forbearance because of Soul Drinker, but I will say this weapon now has Demolitionist and, has, and now has Indomitability, which is basically a 50% boost to Demolitionist, right? Demolitionist gives you about 10% grenade energy per kill. Indomitability adds on another 5% on top of that, so you get 15% per kill. Absolutely excellent. This weapon has Desperate Measures. Demo Desperate Measures makes this thing an excellent ad clear choice for even ability builds, melee builds, whatever you're using. It's a free damage boost. So I'm really thinking Forbearance's Brave version, just overall, across the grand scheme of things, across the entire game, the Brave version is slightly better than the Soul Drinker version. However, they're very close. I wouldn't fault you for putting the Soul Drinker version above the Brave version if you value that survivability a little bit more. Next up, we're going to skip ahead here to Heavy Weapons. We're going to skip to Hammerhead. Now, Hammerhead, obviously no one has this thing yet, so I have some question marks in here. But, you know, there's a whole host of great perks here. We have Rewind Rounds. We have four times the charm on an adaptive frame, which, you know, we did have on commemoration. This thing also has Target Lock. I didn't really put it here because I don't want to enable people using machine guns for DPS. Um, but it has Rampage, Killing Tally, Rampage, Onslaught, you know, double damage perks, absolute killer. So if you really build around getting this thing to have a high reload stat, high uptime, this thing is absolutely going to slay out. Um, certainly compared to commemoration, it does have more lethality. It will kill ads faster. Uh, but I think commemoration right now does have a bit of an edge. Uh, Bray Inheritance is excellent on a machine gun. Um, the distribution of ability energy that it gives compared to the fire rate of a machine gun, like per hit, the amount of ability energy that you get from out of that origin trade is absolutely fantastic. Perhaps even better than indomitability. And um, the perks that commemoration has are, you know, are just excellent. All right, next let's move on to heavy GLs, and I don't think anybody is surprised by this, but in the top of S tier, we have Edge Transit's Brave version. Now, even if you don't consider the fact that Edge Transit will have two enhanceable perks once Final Shape comes out, which will put it over Cataphract no matter what, this thing has the Envious Assassin Cascade Point double perk combination potential. You stack up ad kills on Envious Assassin, get 20, 24 in your mag, and then you switch to Cascade Point, you proc Cascade Point, Cascade Point and Bait and Switch, uh, 66, plus a 30% uh, increase to DPS. Absolutely insane. This thing will shred through bosses. Now, a word of caution, I will say that the Destiny 2 team account has posted and said that this rare perk combo is likely to be altered in the future. Now, this is likely because of the Cascade Point infinite bug right now, where you can have a Cascade Point weapon switch on to a different perk, and you'll keep Cascade Point for an infinite duration until you die or, or reset the weapon's perk status. So unfortunately, you know, that will probably get looked at and maybe change. But even if that happens, this will still be the rank one heavy GL. Some of you were asking me what I meant by the fact that Cataphract has better stats, better mag. Uh, with Cataphract, with the Adept version, you can actually put on Adept mag on spike grenades, and it will give you eight in the mag, which is the max mag size you can get on a, an adaptive heavy GL. Uh, which allows you to stack up envious even higher edge transit obviously is not an adept weapon so it doesn't have that benefit but that's not a big deal it just means that you need to get spike grenades and some sort of mag increase like augmented drums or mini frag as your second mag option uh, which makes it a little bit more annoying to grind if you want the perfect roll but that aside this thing is absolutely phenomenal i mean look at that first column envious assassin cascade point chain reaction second column is bait and switch explosive light with that 47 or so percent increase to damage even higher than bait and switch for a one mag burst First. Once it's enhanceable, you'll get seven shots of explosive light as well, which is excellent. And then of course you have deconstruct. Uh, deconstruct has seen some some interesting interactions right now, where you can basically get infinite ammo if you space out the shots on this thing. Now that being said, I'm not going to recommend deconstruct as the first perk you should get. There's a reason it's at the bottom of the box in column two here, but it's certainly something interesting that you can pair with something like chain reaction and maybe like a GM to get a lot of ammo efficient ad clear off. So. Edge Transit, Rank 1, Heavy Jail, I don't think anyone is surprised by that. And now, let's move on to Swords. Now, Swords have seen a bit of a shift, right? So, the other half in Bequest, or of course still in S tier, we talked about how I moved the Slammer up. 
I also put the Fallen Guillotine's Brave version up in the S tier as well, and the reason for that is because you can get Chain Reaction and Eager Edge, which is kind of a unique perk combo. Now, Chain Reaction on Swords, I will say, is not as excellent for Ad Clear as you might think it is. I've used it on Swords before. It's not that great compared to something like Forbearance, which hits and kills multiple adds, causes multiple Chain Reaction explosions. Swords are very much a single target weapon, and so it's not going to work out as well unless you end up using the Heavy Attack, which of course expends a lot of ammo. Now, a lot of people are asking, hey Aegis, is the double perk combo worth it? We've talked about this in a previous video. No, even with double perks, the Fallen Guillotine will not best bequest with Surrounded or even an adaptive with Whirlwind Blade. But that being said, this weapon is certainly not bad by any means. And even with just Eager Chain or Eager Frenzy, it's still pretty good. It's a Vortex Frame Sword. And with enhanceable perks, it will certainly outdo the other half, which is why it's been placed above the other half in the S tier. Now before we move on to primaries, there's two changes I wanted to talk about. A lot of you have been spamming my comment section saying, Hey Aegis, did you see Retrace Path got shoot to loot? Hey Aegis, did you? I've probably gotten maybe 50 or so comments. I've had to, you know, heart every single one of them or say, Yeah, I know video's coming out soon. So yes, Bungie did add every single perk that they took off of the Dares weapons and they put them back onto the Dares weapons in craftable status. Which means that, most importantly, there's two changes, right? I guess a third change if you really like the BXR. I think it has demo in Kend again. Um, but the, the major changes are going to be as follows. Number one, Retrace Path now has Shoot to Loot. And we'll talk about this Trace Rifle tab that I've added. But Retrace Path now has Shoot to Loot. And number two, our lovely Eager Edge Sword, the other half, has Enhanced Surrounded that 42% damage perk absolutely excellent a lot of people have been fiending for this in the speedrunning community and they've been saying oh you know I, I kept this eager edge uh sword with surrounded and you know just in case they remove it and then they removed it but now we have one with enhanced surrounded which is going to be absolutely excellent for the people that are still using the sword for some missions and strikes etc where you really need to one shot an enemy and surrounded is an excellent damage perk that's much higher than frenzy okay let's move on to primaries now primaries there's been a couple of changes here first of all the kinetic ad clear hand cannon best in slot i think has changed from Fatebringer to Midnight Q's Brave version. And now Midnight Q does have pretty poor stats compared to Fatebringer. It does share the same archetype, but I just couldn't pass up on these perks, man, right? So Explosive Payload Frenzy, arguably the best perk combination on Fatebringer for end game content. You know, Explosive Payload, just a flat damage increase. Great for stunning overloads if you have overload hand cannon. You have Frenzy, of course, one of the best primary damage buffs in the game, as well as a reload and handling buff. And of course, we have Firefly and Shoot to Loot and Kinetic Tremors. I mean, Firefly Frenzy alone is absolutely insane. And Firefly Kinetic Tremors is awesome as well. So as long as you run Frenzy on this thing, or you're taking advantage of Firefly's reload buff after you get a headshot kill, this thing's stats will not matter. It is absolutely excellent. And Indomitability is, of course, better than the no origin trait that Fatebringer is rocking. And of of course, these weapons, all of these Brave version weapons will have enhanceable perks, so you'll have enhanced Firefly, enhanced Frenzy, enhanced Explosive Payload, enhanced Kinetic Tremors, etc, etc, which will make it an even bigger edge over Fatebringer, and as you can see, I've moved Fatebringer to the alternative slot here. Uh, there used to be Warden's Law here, but now that I've realized that most of these weapons are kind of just either for champ stunning or ad clear, you know, Warden's Law didn't really make sense here to begin with, that's a boss damage weapon, so um, yeah. It makes sense to have Midnight Coup as rank 1 and Fatebringer as the alternative. Next up, we have Kinetic Ad Clear Pulse Rifles. I've decided to sub in Blast Furnace here. There used to be Battle Scar with Shoot to Loot and Kinetic Tremors. Now, I will say I think a lightweight archetype is a little bit better than the aggressive burst archetype in PvE. But that being said, this thing has Kinetic Tremors, Frenzy, Shoot to Loot, Firefly, and indomitability and all of these perks will be enhanceable in the future which just makes this thing absolutely killer what bungie did is they said you know the stats maybe not so great uh you know the, the archetypes maybe not so great but we are going to give these things the best perks that we have available right now kinetic tremor shoot salute frenzy firefly explosive payload on every single weapon right and on primaries this is just absolutely killer blast furnace will be very exciting to use that being said i'm not the biggest fan of primaries but even a perk combination like this makes me excited Okay, next up we have Kinetic Scout Rifles. Now, this didn't really change that much. The alternative to Randy's Throwing Knife was already Hung Jury SR4. I just replaced it with the Brave version because the Brave version has Shoot to Loot, Kinetic Tremors, Firefly, and Explosive Payload. Whereas before, you were just rocking something like Shoot to Loot Firefly um, or Shoot to Loot Explosive Payload if you were lucky enough to get, I believe, the Season 19 version. Finally, we're going to talk about Energy SMGs for Ad Clear. I still think Subjunctive is the best choice with Threat Detector, Volt Shot, Shoot to Loot, Stats for All, One for All, and Nanomunitions. 
absolutely killer perk combination here, but I've replaced Unforgiven with Demo Frenzy, the kind of grenade build Void 3.0 choice, with the Recluse's Brave version, with Enhanceable, Enlightened Action, Desperate Measures, which is one of the best neutral perk combos we've ever seen on an SMG. Enlightened Action ensures you have maximum reload all of the time, as long as you're shooting enemies with an SMG, which you are. And then you have Desperate Measures, which is, of course, up to a 30% buff if you're using some sort of ability build and getting kills fairly frequently. We also have Repulsor Brace and Frenzy, which is probably the best Void 3.0 SMG we've ever gotten. Absolutely excellent as well, which is why I replaced Unforgiven with the Recluse's Brave version for that energy add clear alternative slot. Now we're going to talk about Trace Rifles. I've added a Trace Rifle tab. Now in past seasons, I've been reluctant to add this tab. There's only been four, five, six Trace Rifles in past seasons. But today with the re-addition of Shoot to Loot to the Retrace perk pool, I think I've realized now that Trace Rifles have diverged enough to the point where I can split them into separate tiers, separate power classes, and we're going to talk about them right now. So first, Retraced, we got Shoot to Loot back from its uh, graveyard perk pool. And this thing is basically the perfect trace, right? It's solar, which is great for Verity's Brow fusion grenade damage. It has Shoot to Loot in the first column, excellent. It has Demo, it has Frenzy, it has Incandescent, almost every perk you could possibly want on a trace. The only things that I would maybe rather have Demo in the first column, because you don't really need Shoot to Loot and Demo at the same time, usually. I would say Lead from Gold in the second column, Shoot to Loot and Lead from Gold would be absolutely excellent in a GM on Cenotaph. Um, Frenzy Incandescent also just fine with me. Maybe a little bit higher reserves, maybe Extrovert instead of Hot Swap. But still, Retrace Path is as close to Trace Perfection as we have right now. Path of Least Resistance naturally as the runner-up with Shoot to Loot. Bolt Shot is still a good perk. I love using this weapon. Solid A tier. The B tier is populated by Hollow Denial and Appetence. Hollow Denial because Enhanced Let from Gold is the only trace with it. Enhanced Repulsor Brace, same thing. This is the ultimate Void 3.0 trace. It also has Extrovert, which is pretty good. Now, admittedly, these two perks are a little niche on a trace. You usually don't need either of them, but because they are unique and because they are actually arguably useful in some cases, I don't think that the other trace rifles below it deserve to be above Hollow Denial. Appetence also shares a slot in the B tier, and that's because it is the better of the two kinetic slot trace rifles. Now, could it be better? Yes. Demo, Headstone, Overflow, Deconstruct, Attrition Orbs, you know, arguably useful utility perks, but not the best in the world. I would say Headstone on a trace is a little bit unique, but besides that, this is really just here because it's the better of the two kinetic slot trace rifles. We have Acacias in the C tier. I think this trace rifle is pretty overrated. A lot of people talk about it like it's really great, but now that Retraced is out and about, and everyone has access to this amazing perk combination, I really don't think there's any reason to use Acacias, right? Reconstruction is the only thing that Acacias has over other traces, and the fact that it, you can use it for Harmonic Resonance if you want to buff Briars, but really that's not a meta strat these days as much anymore with the power creep that we've had with exotic heavy weapons. And so Reconstruction, you know, having a double mag size, you know, if you wait long enough, not that useful on traces with their high reload stat and really big mag sizes to begin with so i would say c tier is reasonable for it and finally incisor the most recent trials disappointment you know it's it's a strand trace rifle which is fine it's in the kinetic slot which is fine has good reserves but slice attrition orbs hatchling i mean come on no shoot to loot no lead from gold nothing right hatchling really bad on a trace rifle and end game content you're not getting rapid kills with this thing attrition orbs you need to dump like two-thirds of your mag with this thing absolutely unacceptable and then slice i mean slice is fine you know a trace rifle is pretty good at applying slice in a very precise manner but you know if that's the only thing you've got going for your trace yeah i think it deserves to be in the d tier and last but not least, let's talk about origin traits and perks that were added with this update, some of which we've already talked about. So first up, we have Indomitability, which is on every single Brave weapon. On light subclasses, you get 5% grenade energy per weapon kill, and on dark subclasses, you get 5% melee energy. So this is basically like a like a half of demo, half of demo on uh, most weapons, so demo gives 10% on most weapons. It's just an additional 5%, uh, which is pretty good, pretty good, right? Um, this thing is, I would say, better than most of the origin traits in the game. I've placed it in A tier. I think it's worse than Extrovert, Curse Thrall, Brain, Heritance, etc., etc., but it's still pretty good. Next up, we have two perks that were added, right? Two perks. Uh, the very first perk that we have is Desperate Measures, right? And I, I moved Golden Tricorn down because I think its viability has decreased because Desperate Measures has kind of taken over that role. But this is basically like an Adrenaline Junkie, but better. But I don't think it's quite as good as some of the A tier perks here like Cascade Point, Lead from Gold, Field Prep, Auto Loading, Recombination, all of these absolutely essential perks that have very much carved out their own space in the perk field. Desperate Measures is kind of just a neutral perk uh, that's really good. Yeah, it's got, it's got pretty solid duration. After you get your grenade or melee kill, you can refresh the perk with a weapon kill. So it's very good for sprees, but it also scales into endgame content because it's not that heavy on the kill requirement. 
so I've decided to place it at the top of B tier. Magnificent Howl is up next. Now Magnificent Howl is Luna's Howl exclusive. Basically how this perk works is while you have your mag, the number of precision kills that you get it builds up stacks, and when you reload, it consumes all of those stacks and turns them into Magnificent Howl rounds. So basically, if you get maybe 7 precision kills and then you reload your Luna's Howl, you will get 7 Magnificent Howl rounds. And these rounds all do 50% more damage per stack that you have and consume a stack every time you shoot the weapon. So every time you get a precision kill while you're in this state with Magnificent Howl rounds active, you automatically get one stack back. And so you can kind of go on sprees where you're hitting like 50% damage extra shots. Now the problem is, is that this is an end game tier list and in end game content, you are not getting multiple 180 RPM hand cannon precision kills in one mag. If we're talking about efficiency, this perk translates one precision kill into 50% damage on a single shot. Whereas a lot of other perks will translate perhaps like Frenzy doing nothing to 15% damage on all of your shots and not just one shot. So you can see how additively this perk starts to make less and less sense in endgame PvE. Now, the idea behind this perk, at least in PvE, I think it's a good PvP perk, but I, the idea behind this perk in PvE is you get a bunch of precision kills, you reload the weapon, and then you keep getting precision kills and this 50% damage per shot increase allows you to keep adding and adding and adding more stacks because in a perfect world, these Magnificent Howl bullets would help you get those one-shot KOs on red bars. In the real world, in endgame content, you are not going to be able to refresh this perk consistently, even with that 50% damage increase to every single one of your shots. Now, the only question is, is this viable for Lucky Pants damage? And the answer is no. First of all, there's a couple problems with this equation. Number one, Luna's Howl is a 180 RPM hand cannon, which even though that's one of the faster legendary archetypes for getting shots out, something like a heavy burst hand cannon like Warden's Law will be able to get more shots off and be able to get the Lucky Pants perk stacked up more quickly. Number two, Magnificent Howl requires that you get 10 precision kills before you re reload going into boss damage, which is an absolutely obscene amount of precision kills to be getting for an individual player before boss damage starts. Number three, the way Lucky Pants works is that it stacks up over the course of five and a half seconds, and at the end of those seconds, the damage buff completely falls off. The way Magnificent Howl works is for the first 10 shots, you get 50% increased damage. For every shot after that, you get no buff whatsoever, assuming you were able to get 10 kills to begin with. Now, I did some real testing with a 180 RPM hand cannon, Word of Crota, and I discovered that you're probably going to be able to get 17 shots off of a 180 RPM hand cannon using the Lucky Pants buff. If we do the math, we scale up 60% per shot until we have 600% increased damage at 10 shots. We're going to go ahead and do some math here. 50% bonus to the first 10 shots, and of course a 0% damage bonus to the last 7 shots after the Magnificent Howl buff runs out. We add it all up, and what do we get? 307,000. Now, for reference, let's take a look at some of the competing hand cannons. The Last Word, with its first Lucky Pants proc, 350,000. Malfeasance with his first Lucky Pants proc, 362,000. Borden's Law, another legendary that competes with this gun, 340,000 without the requirement of getting any precision kills. And so, Luna's Howl, Magnificent Howl, is it usable for PvE roam content and endgame? I would say no. Is it usable for boss damage? Good luck. So, that's why I've decided to place it in the D tier. This thing is a mediocre spree kind of perk, uh, except for it's extremely stringent on how many precision kills you need to get. You are just not getting that many precision kill stacks inside of endgame PvE. All right, well, that's pretty much all I have to say today about the endgame tier list updates. Uh, whenever more weapons or origin traits or perks drop, you'll be sure to see me update this in the future. If you have any feedback, make sure to leave it in the comment section as usual. And uh, soon I'll be releasing that vault cleaning video, and then maybe we'll move on to the build series that I've been stalling for a long time now. So I'll see you around, and thanks for watching.